Are you trying to create a big open world game in Unity, but your frame rate is horrible as well? Is it even possible to create big open world games in Unity? The short answer is no. It's not possible to create a massive open world game in Unity. The long answer is, of course you can, but you'll need to create a whole lot of tools or get a lot of assets from the Unity asset stores to do so. One of my hobbies in game development, or call it specializations if you must, is optimization. For some weird reason, I really dig looking into the Unity profiler stats and try to make them look better. Often this is done by making my own code smarter, because my code sucks, generally, uh, rewriting it with Unity jobs or by spreading a big chunk of logic over multiple frames. However, these optimizations are generally very small and will not make it so that your massive open world environment will actually run decently on a mainstream PC. And I think one of the biggest reasons for your open world game not working in Unity is because of Unity's core focus of always wanting to offer the same kind of features on all the platforms they support. This has awarded them the number one spot on engine for mobile game development. Yay! Good job, Unity. However, it also means that they invest less time in certain under the hood techy stuff that will only work on, on PC hardware. Now, truth be told, they try to fix this with the so-called render pipelines and the two presets they made for it, uh, the lightweight URP for every platform out there and the heavy hitter HDRP for the, the more beefy PCs. However, I don't think Unity has the manpower to split their focus on so many different things at the same time. So HDRP is and always has been a bad idea and it should be deprecated as fast as possible and all focus should go back to URP. We're in an era where mobile computing power is getting seriously good and powerful and the differences between platforms is getting smaller. Most platforms even support the same graphics API called Vulkan or something that looks very much like it. Now another one of the reasons that Unity doesn't offer stellar performance is, at least I think so, is that it's made especially for dummies like me. Yes, that's right. By making it easier to create games in Unity, they are killing the engine's performance as well. And that's, that's bad. But I digress. One thing I've noticed when I was still developing City of Springs is that Unity is bad at disabling objects that do not have to be enabled. Or it's better called culling. Let me show you what I mean. Here I created a demo scene to showcase this with 700 lights that also cast shadows. And to better show the shadows, I added a few rotating cubes for show. Now lights and especially shadow casting are notoriously heavy in games. So Unity does something smart. You can actually set the maximum light you would uh, like to have active at the same time. And well, in most cases, you won't even notice some lights being off because there will probably never be so many light sources nearby. As you can see, if I limit the amount of active light sources to 100, it makes the performance a lot better. It allows the 100 lights that are closest by to stay enabled and it disables all the rest. What a nice feature. It's all nice though. If I manually disable the already disabled lights, I get even better performance. Why, you ask me? Well, because Unity is bad and knowing when stuff needs to be disabled or enabled, their culling algorithms are quite slow and heavy. And, well, you should disable these culling algorithms if possible, if you are building a big open world environment. For this example, I used light sources because there are an easy way to showcase this, but this happens with every single component. In City of Springs, I used to have many, many skinned mesh renderers, not knowing that when they were out of sight and thus culled by Unity's culling system, they were actually still really hampering the game's performance. All right, so now that we know that Unity's culling system is not that great and actually killing your performance, but if we're going to do the culling ourselves, how do we 
prevent Unity from doing it. The automated culling system is really annoying and really badly documented as it's not just one system. Um, but here are a few tips. You can disable the occlusion culling on the cameras. And if you use more than one camera, disable it on all cameras. You can enable infinite light sources so no light sources are being culled. You can disable the occlusion culling on all skin mesh renders. This is a lot of work. And also on the particle system in, in your environment. This way, at least those objects are not being culled by the slow and heavy culling system. There will probably be more culling being done in the background, but I don't think there are ways to disable it all. But at least we got most of it. Congratulations! The performance of your game went from bad to absolutely shit! Yay! Great job! Alright, now to do the culling ourselves. One way I really like doing this is by using the asynchronous scene loading and unloading. Loading scenes is one of the system that actually works really well in Unity and it's really fast. At least in builds it really fast. In the editor it gives massive spikes in the profiler, but that doesn't matter because it's all about how the performance is in a build. If you manually divide all the game objects and their components in your level into chunks, different chunks, and then place each of those chunks in a separate scene file, you can then load and unload those scene files whenever you need them. Personally, I went one step further with this for Cyberdam. I have collider chunks, light source chunks, high priority render chunks like skyscrapers, houses, etc. and low priority render chunks for all the well, smaller details. For Cyberdam, I only need colliders that are around 50 meters or closer to the player. And many colliders are very heavy for all the physics calculations, so only loading in the ones I really need well, it saves a lot of performance. Same thing for the light sources. I only load in the chunks with the light sources that are close, well, maybe 10 meters from the player because I don't need more lights. The high priority rendering chunks are a little bit different because I want to be able to see further away, but I don't want to load in all the chunks that are behind the camera. So I only load in the chunks that are within the camera view. Of course, there are many more ways to improve on the system, like more chunk types, smarter loading and unloading based on view distance or distance to the main camera. Just make sure that whatever algorithm you use to check if the scene chunks should be loaded or not is also multi-threaded because, well, that saves a lot of performance as well. And just like I said in a previous video about the power of Unity editor tools, please, Please make the process of dividing your environment into chunks fully automated, because having to do this manually would be, well, truly inhumane. And the smarter you do this, the less active Unity components you'll have in your scene, which is a massive performance improvement of itself, but it will also make sure that Unity's culling system has to work less, which gives you another performance boost as well. And to conclude this week's video, this week, I officially reached the 500 subscriber milestone, all thanks to everyone that is watching right now. It has been a truly epic journey for me to share these last five months with you guys. And if there's anything that I've learned as a game developer for the past 10 years, is that you need to celebrate every accomplishment. Because if you don't, well, it's just dumb not to. So, cheers, salut, school, prost, or whatever you say, wherever you are. Let's have fun reaching the next milestone and see you next week.